Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be unboxing the Samsung Galaxy A51. So here's the box and this is the next iteration of the A50 lineup. Well, first we have the Samsung Galaxy A50. After that, we had the A50s and now we have the A51. Probably six months down the line, we will get A51s. Anyway, as of now, this phone is priced at 24,000 rupees. It comes only in one variant with 6 GB of RAM and 128 GB of storage. It's available in three colors, Prism Black, Prism Blue, and Prism White. And we have the Prism Black color with us right now. Now this phone comes with a completely new set of features, a completely different look, and some additional software features when compared to the Samsung A50 and the A50s. Most noticeably, the red camera setup and the display. So I am pretty excited to see how it's gonna be. So without any further delays, let's get on with the unboxing. By the way guys, this is not a sealed unit, I bought it from my friend. I have been doing that a lot recently. Anyway, once we open the box, first we have a small box. Let me just put that aside. Next we have the phone itself, let me just toss that aside. Following that is a 15 watts fast charger, a USB Type-C charging cable, and finally, we get some old style earphones. Now let me just put everything aside and come back to the box. So inside the small box we get a SIM card ejector, some documentation which we'll never read and finally a soft silicone case. Now let me just come back to the phone and remove the wrapping. So guys, this is how the phone looks on the back and this is how the phone looks on the front. Now let's have a physical overview. On the back this phone has a 3D curved fiberglass and underneath it we have a black crushed prism design which looks pretty cool but only under the sunlight. You also get a prism effect but personally I am not a big fan of that. Now at the top we have the quad camera setup along with a single LED flash and at the bottom it has the Samsung branding. Now on the front you get a massive display with super slim bezels all around and a punch hole design just like the latest Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Lite. Above the display it has the earpiece just like most phones and the chin is quite small. Now for the sides, on the right side it has the power and volume buttons. They seem to be made of plastic, I'm not sure but they are sufficiently elevated and have a nice clicky feel to them. At the top it has just a secondary microphone for noise cancellation. On the left side it has a SIM card tray housing two nano SIM slots along with a dedicated SD card slot. Finally at the bottom we have the 3.5mm audio jack followed by the USB Type-C charging port, primary microphone and the speaker grill. Now this phone has a thickness of 7.9mm and weighs just 172 grams. Initial impressions, phone feels super sleek and it has a bit of weight to it but it's not too heavy. Now let's try out the case. Now this is how the phone looks with the case on. On the front there is a slightly raised lip but that's almost negligible. And for the back, it even has a slightly raised lip for the camera module. Overall, this case can give you some basic protection for the first few days. But for long term use, I suggest you to get a better case as soon as possible. By the way about the buttons, even with the case on, they are easily traceable and nice and clickable. Now these are the complete specifications of this phone. On the rear, this phone has a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel primary camera with f2.0 aperture, followed by a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 123 degree field of view and f2.2 aperture. That's followed by a 5 megapixel depth sensor and a 5 megapixel macro camera. For selfies, it has a 32 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture inside that punch hole design. On the front, you get a massive 6.5 inch Super AMOLED Infinity O display with Full HD Plus resolution protected by a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 3. Because of the 20 is to 9 aspect ratio and super slim bezels, phone actually doesn't feel all that long. As for the rest of the specs, under the hood it sports a Exynos 9611 processor with Mali G72 MP3 GPU with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. Right out of the box, it will be running One UI 2.0 based on Android 10. Finally, this device is powered by a massive 4000mAh battery that supports fast charging and also comes with a 15 watts power adapter inside the box. So guys, those are the complete specifications. Now let me turn on the phone and set it up and come back to you in a second. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and set it up. It's just the same old Samsung UI, there's nothing new. We have some new features, but we'll come back to that later. For now, let's check out the storage information. Out of that 128GB of storage, we get about 105.9GB of space for our user apps and user data. Out of that 6GB of RAM, 
we get about 3 gigabytes of RAM free right out of the box. Now this is the about page. So this phone is running One UI 2.0 based on Android 10. And as of now, this phone has the February security patch, which is pretty great. Now let's check out the camera interface. So this is a camera interface and it looks pretty much similar like all the Samsung phones. You get a toggle over here to switch between the primary camera and the wide angle camera. And you also have the regular gestures where you can swipe up over the shutter button to get this floating button. And you can use this floating button to take pictures and you can send it back like that. And we can also do a swipe up and swipe down gesture to switch between the front camera and the rear camera. Now if we go to the left side, we have the live focus mode. That's portrait mode for the rear camera. And on this phone, we can also change the background blur effect before taking a picture just by using the slider. Now back to the primary camera. If we go to the right side, we have video recording mode. We can record video using the primary camera or even by using the wide angle camera. Next, this phone also has super stable mode and you can enable it using this toggle. Now, once you enable this feature, you can get super steady footage. I'll show you the sample shot later. Now, finally, if you go to the more section, these are the additional modes that are available on this phone. We also get a dedicated night mode to take better pictures in low lighting conditions. Besides that, we also have slow motion and super slow motion. So once again, over here we have the super slow motion. And if we go back to more again, we have slow motion over here. This phone also has the hyperlapse feature and this is something that you should definitely check out. Now this is the interface for the front facing camera and once again there isn't any huge difference between this phone and other Samsung phones. Just like other Samsung phones you get a toggle over here. By default the front camera is cropped to give you a regular size selfie. But if you want a wide angle selfie, you can use this toggle. Now you get a slightly more wider selfie. On the left side, we have the regular live focus mode, which is portrait mode for the front camera. And we can also change the amount of background blur effect we want before taking a portrait selfie. On the right side, we have the regular video recording mode. And on this phone, we also have AR Doodle and you can access that feature from here. Now using this feature, we can draw some stuff in the camera. Like I can draw st stuff like that. And that becomes an AR object and even while recording video, it sticks there. So you can make cool videos using this feature. Next, if we go to the more section, we have some extra features, but these features might not work for the front camera. But interestingly, we have a dedicated night mode even for the front camera. So if you want to take selfies in low lighting conditions, this is something I would definitely recommend you to do. So guys, that's the camera interface. And this phone is definitely packing a lot of cool camera related features which are not available on other phones or especially on other Samsung phones, which usually price under 20,000 rupees. So if you'd like to take a lot of photos, you are a camera enthusiast, you should definitely check out all the features on this phone. Now, these are some sample shots. Now let's test the fingerprint scanner. I've already set it up and here we go. So the fingerprint scanner is not super fast, say like the Oppo, Vivo or the OnePlus phones, but it works and it's kind of usable. I wish it was slightly faster. Now let's try it when the display is on. And even when the display is on, it is slightly slower, almost takes like a second to unlock the phone. Overall, it's usable, but I wish it was a bit more faster. Now let's test the face lock feature. I've already set it up and here we go. In good lighting conditions, it is pretty fast. Once again, not as fast as the Oppo Vivo phones, not even as the OnePlus phone, but it's still usable. Now let's test it in low lighting conditions. So in low lighting conditions, it's definitely struggling. Almost not working at all. Let's try it in complete darkness. So surprisingly, in complete darkness, it works. It's trying to increase the screen brightness and then trying to read my face and it works. But overall, the process is kind of slow. It almost takes two seconds to just unlock the phone. So overall, face unlock works and it works pretty well in good lighting conditions. But in low lighting conditions, I would rather use the fingerprint scanner. Now let's test the speaker loudness. So this phone has a single mono speaker that's at the bottom and this is how it sounds. So 
So guys, that was the speaker loudness. It is loud enough, but not super loud. It's sufficient for ringtone alarms and regular media consumption. Once again, I wish it was a bit more louder. Considering the screen size, a slightly louder speaker or stereo speakers would have added to the overall experience. Now let me show you some of the highlighting features of this phone. First we have a dedicated dark mode and you can enable it from the display settings. And once you turn on the dark mode, phone really looks pretty cool. Now this is the notification area. These are the notification toggles. And this is the app draw. Let's go to settings once again. So overall the dark theme looks like this. Next, this phone also has the latest Android 10 based gestures and to enable it, go to settings, then select navigation bar and we have the full screen gestures over here. Now you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home. You can swipe and hold for recent apps and these are your recent applications. And next, you can do a swipe left or swipe right gesture from the sides to go back a step. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left or bottom right corner and it will trigger Google Assistant. And finally, you can easily switch between applications by swiping on this bar at the bottom. Just swipe left or right to quickly switch between applications. It is much more easy than going to the recent apps page and switching applications. So these are the new full screen gestures and they work really well. Besides that, there are a lot more features on this phone which are not available on other Samsung phones, especially not in Samsung M series phones. So things like we have edge panel and edge notifications. I really can't show you in this video, but you can check that out in my best features video. Besides that, we also get the Samsung Pay feature, which is one of my favorite features on the Samsung phones. So using this feature, we can make transactions with your phone instead of taking your debit card or credit card. So this is something I really miss on other phones and this feature is available on this phone. This is more like a flagship feature and it's great that Samsung is offering it in this phone. So guys, these are some of the coolest features on this phone. Now before I conclude, these are the Anti2 and Geekbench scores. So guys, to conclude, at a price this phone is being sold, there really isn't any major competition. Well, there are better phones which offer you better performance, but when it comes to the overall form factor, battery life, screen size, or the new punch hole design, Samsung A51 definitely offers you a lot of cool things. So what do you think about this phone? Let me know by commenting below this video and if you have any questions about this phone or want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.